I'll stand back there behind this camera so he won't have to look at my ugly mug. Uh, how do you know uh, when it's time to harvest onions? Well, you know, if you're uh, wanting to uh, store them for a little while, uh, you want to wait for them to get the soft neck stage and the tops will fall over. There may be a couple out here that's uh, getting pretty close. Kind of hard to uh, tell probably in the, in the camera. But there's one over here, I think. Anyway, uh, you don't want to step on the tops and mash them over. But you'll feel them get, this neck will get soft. As you can see, this one, this one here is soft. You know, it is, uh, it is ready to pull. If you can see, see that or not, see how that, that neck is soft and it just falls over. That's how you know when that, that onion's ready to, uh, to pull. And uh, what you want to do after that is you want to, you can kind of lay these in a row out in the sun a little bit and you can cover, cover the onion, you know, with another row in front of it. But you want these to, to dry down a little bit. That sun just kind of gives them a little, little boost. And then after that, you want to put them in a uh, well-ventilated area, hopefully with some airflow, and let these tops dry down, and they'll they'll shrivel up and wither up. And when they dry down, you can cut cut that top off and then put them in storage. But if you cut it off right now, you're going to leave a big open area, and it's moist, a lot of moisture there could introduce some bacteria in there, and it'll it'll decrease your your storage of your onion there may be a few more out here I'll I'll go down through here and look here in a little bit but you don't like I said you you don't want to step on the tops you don't want to cut them off I've seen one video out there where where he's telling you to uh, you know while they're still in the ground cut trim these these leaves off you know that's a that's crazy you know, this is what's uh, feeding this onion and making it bulb up. Each one of these leaves is a layer in that onion. So the more leaves you can get on the, on the top, the more layers and the larger the bulb will be in your onion. This is the way I've been growing onions. Uh, I order my onions from Dixondale Onions and this is this is their method that they show on their website. There's some, some articles on there, some newsletters, maybe some fact sheets. I don't remember what all's on there, but uh, this is how they uh, they tell you to grow your onions. You know, a double row like that. That way you can fertilize down in the middle of them. And they do uh, a good job, you know, like that. I probably could have fertilized them a, a little heavier and got a little, little more uh, top growth to them and had a bigger onion. But you know, uh, a big old onion like that, you know, that's that's a good uh, slicing onion, you know, for sandwiches or hamburgers or things like that. And the other smaller ones are are just as good, you know. You got a recipe that calls for some onion. Oh, those smaller ones come in real handy. The uh, the copra onion down at the far end, uh, like I said many times, I think in other videos, uh, these are a long day variety. And in my area, I'm in Oklahoma, it's recommended that I plant short day or intermediate day onions. But these are on the, the short end of the scale on long day variety and I wanted to try them see how they do here if I could get a little longer storage you know out of them and a little trivia trivia for you you know uh, by day onions a lot of people talk about by day onions they're grown in Georgia and the, uh, the state of Georgia actually uh, 
owns the name Vidalia. There's only uh, certain counties in the state of Georgia that are uh, licensed to call their onions Vidalia. And they, they have strict guidelines of when they can pull them, when they can sell them, and things like that. And, and still call them Vidalia onions. And uh, there's all kinds of articles on the internet of how they got started calling them by day onions anyway. But they, they originally started out as a yellow granite onion. And they still grow yellow granite onions, but they call them by day onions. Uh, or an offshoot of the yellow granite onion. So if, uh, if somebody's growing onions somewhere else in the country than those uh, certain counties that are licensed to call them by that name, they're, they're not legally, you know, uh, growing by day onions. You know, they, they can't call them that legally. So if you want to uh, grow a, a variety of onions, like they do, just get the yellow granite onion. These here are, are candies. Uh, they're a sweet onion, uh, just like the yellow granite. Uh, yellow granite is, is actually a, a hybrid onion also. Oh well, maybe you find that interesting, maybe not. I'm not a, I'm not a know-it-all, despite what some of y'all may think. I just try to uh, put out factual information. Uh, generally, when you plant your onions, it's a, a pretty good uh, guide would be 10 weeks before your last frost date. So if I plant these February 15th, you know, roughly April 15th would be uh, my last frost date, somewhere in that area. So uh, that's a pretty good uh, starting point for when you need to start planting onions in your area. At least uh, in the southern United States, I know absolutely nothing about growing uh, crops in the northern states. But that's the way it is down here in Oklahoma. Most everything you plant is going to be by your uh, average last frost date. So you may want to look that up if you're unsure about that. Usually the middle of April, down here in the south part of Oklahoma, southeast, about April 15th is a pretty good uh, date for your last frost date most years.